Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Gift of Health uh, Weekly Wellness Chat. Today, we have a very special guest joining us from Taipei, Taiwan. We have Ashley, Ashley Madden. She is a native of Newfoundland. And she's a pharmacist, nutritionist, uh, author, recipe developer. She has so many hats and so many talents. <laughs> um, she's, um, uh, she has an amazing story. Like she worked as a pharmacist and um, she uh, healed herself, uh, healed a, a multiple sclerosis with making significant changes with her diet and lifestyle. And with that, she went on to become a certified chef, certified yoga teacher, and then a, a food photographer, a wellness blogger, so many uh, titles she has lived in. Uh, so, so mainly you will say she's a talented woman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she, she has so many talents and so much to share. So we are really excited that Ashley is joining us today and it's very early morning for her, but still mm -hmm. like uh, she's with us. So we are so grateful and thank, thank you, Ashley. And thank you so much for having me. This is fantastic. Yes, and we are so looking forward to this conversation and actually uh, like uh, all the Gift of Health family members and viewers are really excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. And thank you so much for that very kind uh, welcome and introduction. Yes. So Ashley, um, like you have been a pharmacist. I, I mean, like your background is ph uh, pharmacy. What actually um, made you uh, even, even to think about uh, being a chef and uh, like, we would really love to know like what encouraged you to go towards that path. Um, that's kind of an interesting story, actually. So, um, you know, growing up, I was always very academically driven, really interested in science, uh, which eventually became medicine. Um, and so I always thought that I would go down the healthcare path, which I ended up doing. Um, but there is a story from how I got to pharmacist to plant-based chef, and I will get that. But fun fact, I did take, when I was 18, I took one of those like career surveys to find out what you should be. And my number one result was culinary artistry. So that's very, <laughs> I remember that. So that's super interesting. So anyways, um, you know, I went to university, decided I wanted to work in healthcare, chose pharmacy, and, um, you know, I think this might be a good time to tell your viewers kind of what happened to me during that period of time. So um, shortly after I uh, graduated pharmacy school, um, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and the diagnosis was a shock. I was uh, diagnosed almost by accident. I was getting um, evaluated for a, a back injury that I had. And so it was really tough. It was my first year out of school. And, you know, as anybody who gets diagnosed with a chronic disease or an autoimmune disease knows, you know, it's a, it's a period of stages to acceptance. And so that for me was several years. And so then when I finally accepted the diagnosis, I really got interested in other ways that I could take care of myself. I wasn't really satisfied with uh, just taking medication and, you know, hoping for the best. So um, I always say that I got like an investigative fever. Like I just became obsessed with reading about uh, MS and other autoimmune diseases and then other chronic diseases. And then that turned into reading about nutrition and lifestyle factors. And it kind of just drove me in this plant-based direction. And um, I always say education is such an important piece because once you learn you can't unlearn. And for me at the time as a pharmacist, I was like, well, I know, I know the thing to do here. So I got, you know, super interested into veganism and plant-based uh, recipes and lifestyle. And then I just fell in love with it. And I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to be a chef. <laughs> so I became so uh, consumed with the idea that 
like really healthy food could be like incredibly delicious and interesting and elegant and, you know, fun and celebratory. And I started making those recipes myself and I really wanted the credentials to officially say that, you know, I was a, a trained chef. And so then I just, you know, my husband and I chatted a bit and I think he could tell how passionate I was about it. So um, actually the year we got married or it was, I think later the first year we got married, I, um, I moved to New York to go to culinary school. So that's how that came about. <laughs> that's, that's a quite an amazing, you know, journey you had. Uh, so uh, this is like, you know, Hippocrates said, let food be your medicine, like over 2,500 years ago, you like, you know, being a pharmacist, you're putting that into like, you know, full circle, taking that into full circle, like from using medications as medicine, you now you're you know, using and promoting using food as medicine. So what, what, uh, like what changes have you noticed with the, the food changes you made, like with, with your health? Um, I think, oh my God, so many, so many. And it's, you know, I've been doing this for about 10 years. So I think I've forgotten how things change so quickly in the first year or two. But I do have to like preface all this by saying that, you know, like I do believe in evidence-based medicine. I do believe in medications and doctors and all of that. And, um, you know, and that has its place. But like you, the both of you teach um, in a lot of the, chronic lifestyle diseases of today, you know, diet and lifestyle really is the solution um, or for many of them. So for me, when I first started making these changes, of course, it was with the intention of preventing progression of my MS um, and, you know, hopefully prolonging my health. What I didn't know was that as I shifted towards whole foods, which, you know, is vegetables, fruits, whole grains, beans, nuts, and seeds, um, I started sleeping better. I started having more energy. My weight, not that I was trying to lose weight, but my weight, you know, has been in the same range now for like 10 years. Whereas before I know it fluctuated with like Christmas, and, you know, just like stuff, <laughs> stuff that would come up with summer vacation, you know, going on vacation. Um, I, and then small oh, things too, just like, um, I used to get a lot of indigestion or uh, I used to get a lot of migraines. I used to have really brittle fingernails. Um, my skin used to be different. It's just, I think sometimes when you list all the changes, it almost sounds like fiction, like it's made up, but it, it's not, <laughs> so, you know, it doesn't sound real, but no, the changes have been amazing. And then especially with my MS, um, you know, I was on medication, injectable medication for seven years. Mm -hmm. And I came off it, you know, through a discussion with my neurologist, you know, I had several years of very low grade symptoms, um, feeling quite stable, feeling like I was, you know, in like a maintenance stage, I guess. So, uh, you know, I've been off medications now for four or five years. Um, and so obviously I feel like that's probably, you know, the biggest gift to me is that I've been off medication. But again, if I felt like I was deteriorating or my doctors felt like it was, you know, better for me to be back on medication, I would do that too. So, you know, I just take it one day at a time, but definitely the benefits with MS have been the most rewarding. It's quite an amazing, uh, you know, journey you had. Um, as you've mentioned, like, you know, we are all for doing evidence-based medicine, but 80% of the things that we are seeing in our hospitals and clinics, the diseases, the chronic diseases are due to poor diet and lifestyle choices. And uh, MS, again, like many people don't understand the multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease. And there is a strong component of diet and lifestyle factors in um, the causing the disease and the progression of the disease. Um, one of the researchers, actually, Dr. Roy Swank. Yeah. He did a, yeah, Roy. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> he I know did, him. Yeah, yeah. He did the research on multiple sclerosis for over 50 years. And, um, and he has the best published data where, like, um, when the diet was changed, like, his patients were not 100% plant based, but the more they went towards plant based, like 90, 95% plant based, 
Right. The more benefits that they they saw in terms of uh, improving multiple sclerosis symptoms. So, and you are here, uh, like in a living testament, because many people with this, you know, yeah. uh, diagnosis disease, they their health deteriorates. Uh, and then, um, we're so happy for you. You know, you took the other route to take charge well, of your health. Know- it's interesting you talk about uh, Dr. Swank. That was one of the first studies I read uh, early, because early on when I was still practicing pharmacy, I was like reading clinical trials. I, I really wanted to dig deep. And I, you know, when I talk to people today who um, are diagnosed with MS or another, you know, diabetes, heart disease, whatever, I feel like one of the biggest uh, things you can do to support yourself in making changes is to educate yourself because you feel so empowered once you know the benefits of the changes you're going to make. And you guys do that so well at your gift of health retreats. You know, you start off with education about like, this is what's happening in your body. And these are the changes that can come about if you make a, you know, health supportive lifestyle and dietary changes. So in the beginning for me, learning about um, the reasons and why I should change how I eat and then the benefits that were possible, that's probably the biggest motivating factor in, in the whole thing. So in the beginning, I think education is really important. Absolutely. Like, you know, nothing, nothing ever, I mean, no long lasting change can happen without raising awareness. Isn't it like so? Uh, education is a huge puzzle. Once, but once you have the education, you know what to do and what not to do. Then comes the biggest puzzle. Hey, it seems like you know it's an interesting concept, but how do I do it? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what? Are you of, how do you do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like you know, in your journey, like when you when you you started this like ten years ago. I mean, yeah. we had our personal journeys. How we discovered this. Uh, in a whole food plant based way of lifestyle through actually Netflix by watching folks over <laughs> Yes, yes. Forks you know? over knives and, and so many other documentaries. What the health? Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't even think of them. Um, Cowspiracy. So many that come afterwards, you know, are they're all so helpful. Actually, that's the best way to kickstart all of this. If you don't have the patience or like the conviction to read a book, Take a couple hours and watch some of these documentaries because they are so powerful. Yeah. So uh, we, we were just wondering, like, you know, in your journey, when you, uh, what kind of challenges that you had, like when you started this lifestyle, like plant-based lifestyle? Looks like you uh, Or maybe we should ask, like, even before you started plant-based journey, what were you typically eating? You know, oh my God, it's so... I really thought that I was so healthy, like, and and not that I was unhealthy, but you know, I was like, okay, I exercise, um, I use like low fat dressing, you know, (laughs) (laughs) I eat like the white chicken, the white meat on the turkey. I just thought that I was really, I was young. I I was 23 when I was diagnosed with MS. So I thought it was such a shock because I thought I was so invincible and I thought I was already healthy. So I was like, well, that's it. There's nothing I can do. And then I was like, oh, actually there's so many pitfalls you can fall into if you just listen to commercials on TV or like, you know, the regular um, old traditional health advice, you know, the old food pyramid, which was what was around when I started making these changes. Um, But for me, the pitfalls in the beginning, um, you know, I think it really comes down to, you have to figure out what kind of person you are. Like if you like making changes gradually, very planned out, very structured with, you know, you can look at a piece of paper and see where you're going. Or if you like making changes like cold turkey, like right away overnight. I'm the latter. So um, I read, there's this uh, organization, this charity called the Overcoming Multiple Sclerosis Charity. And they're originally from Australia, but I think they're based in the UK now. They have published a book like a long time ago. It was the first, uh, uh, first version of the book. And I read it in two days and it was about MS and diet. And it was after I'd done all this other research. And I finished the book, I think on like a Sunday. And I was like, that's it tomorrow done. And that's how I started. So for the first week I had no plan. So I ate like salad and like pita bread. Like I didn't know what I was doing. So I kind of was doing it as I was learning. Um, So I would say in the beginning, you know, the challenge for me was trying to figure out 
what meals to eat while I was working. Cause I was still working as a pharmacist. I was on call sometimes like, so I had a, a pretty busy lifestyle. The other thing I would say is that, um, I really enjoyed, you know, eating out with my friends. And again, in the beginning, I was like in my early twenties. So I really, you know, felt like, okay, what am I going to do now? Like I can't go out and just eat whatever. And this was back when, you know, vegan restaurants weren't really a thing. So, um, yeah, eating out was, was quite tough. It's much easier now, but eating out back then was, was pretty difficult. Like, I mean, uh, it's so interesting to hear. I mean, like when we eat, we think, okay, we are eating really healthy. But like when we learn about the facts, oh, okay, even the white chicken is not so good for us or even that low fat dressings that we think are healthy, they're, they're not so healthy as, as we presume. So, so the, thank you for educating our viewers that like the foods that we think are healthy are actually not yeah, so much. but that can also be really depressing. I find like I've seen the look in people's eyes. I used to do some nutritional consulting and um, group work and, you know, and I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. You, you know, you talk about one thing and you're like, well, okay, maybe don't, you know, don't fry in extra virgin olive oil. Don't know the de like the low fat deli meat is a good and you keep knocking all these things down and they just see people get so defeated, but you're like, wait, 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 wait. It gets so much better. Like this, it gets better. Just hold on because <laughs> a plant-based diet and a plant-based lifestyle is so rewarding and amazing and fulfilling and satisfying. And it is the best thing I ever did. And so all those, all that resistance you feel in the beginning to letting go of the things that you love, you know, that is the hard part because it's so worth it. What, what comes afterwards is phenomenal. And you have also shown through your work that like healthy food not only can taste great, it can look great and it can make you feel great too. And especially with your uh, upcoming book, the, <laughs> the plant-based cookbook, which is like gluten-free, oil-free, and it's, it's a rare combination to find because a lot of cookbooks out there also, uh, whether they talk about vegan cookbooks or vegetarian uh, cookbooks, they, they use oil, but uh, it's really amazing like how you have uh, created a cookbook uh, like without using oil, without using processed foods. So like there is a way like where we can- There um, is a way, there is. And I knew um, when I was in culinary school, you know, I went to like a health focused culinary school. Um, but even so, you know, we'd make like, quinoa croquettes and you know pistachio pesto with just like so much oil and stuff and so I would always just ask like the head chef like can I just make it differently and eventually they just let me because I kept asking but I always knew that I wanted to compile recipes that I had created because I couldn't find the recipes that had all those things you know that were a vegan, um, free of processed food, like, you know, processed butters and different kinds of soy meats and, and stuff like that. And also that were oil free. So I knew that I wanted to compile these in a book someday because I always, I, I knew that if I was looking for them, somebody else somewhere else is also looking for them. Um, and then a couple of years ago, I started getting messages from people saying like, can you like put these into like an easier, you know, I don't want to go to your blog every time to like scroll stuff. And truly, I'm not really like an authentic blogger. I actually have a recipe blog. I go there to share recipes that I think people might like or that could use. Um, and so I knew that it was a bit brave to ask publishers to like, hey, I want to write a cookbook that's not only vegan because I forget vegan still such a small, you know, small percentage of people, but not only is it going to be vegan, I also want it to be gluten free to meet the needs of so many people who choose gluten free now, especially people with autoimmune disease. And then also that's oil free. So um, it took some convincing and a lot of shopping around, but uh, it happened and it's here and I'm so happy that all those things are on the cover to just proclaim what it is, because um, I know a lot of these things are controversial for mainstream, but I think it will really help a lot of people and give them recipe solutions. You know, the book is 
about giving you traditional recipes that you love, like spaghetti and burgers and, you know, lasagna and pancakes and stuff like that, but also on how to use whole foods in a more creative way, you know, how to make icing out of black beans or, you know, like Parmesan cheese out of cashews and things like that. So I think it's, it's a combination of education, um, but also, you know, resources and inspiration too. Excellent. What a wonderful resource. <laughs> what a wonderful resource that you have created, right? Uh, we are so, so happy. Like, you know, you, you choose to create this. It's a beautiful gift um, because, uh, you know, what the, the area that you're embarking on, creating whole food, plant-based recipes that are oil-free and gluten-free, um, it's, um, it's like uh, the perfect medicine for especially someone who is battling autoimmune disease, chronic yeah. diseases. Yeah, um, because many times when people go to this plant-based eating, uh, they go with some of the vegan recipes and just because something is vegan doesn't mean it's healthy. Oh my God. Right? Vegan eating, One vegan eating is a huge, Yeah, vegan eating is like a, such a huge, huge right. spectrum. You could be eating really healthy, and you could be eating something like you know, um, really healthy. Like what you're creating are so unhealthy uh, that you know you, like you that sabotage you, sabotage yeah. your health. Yes, yes. like I think sometimes um, it might seem that like a vegan meal is at least like a step closer to plant-based, but the wrong vegan meal can be equally as terrible for you as like, you know, a double Big Mac. Like it really depends, you know? Um, that's a topic that I feel like, so not passionate about, but I just love discussing it with people because it's really enlightening to be like, oh, this is the difference, you know? Vegan is anything free, uh, from animal products. So, you know, whatever that may be, including for some people, it's honey and everything. And plant-based is more of yes, vegan, but also free from processed foods, highly processed oils, highly processed sugars, and foods that are prepared in a more healing, nourishing way. So um, plant-based is vegan, but vegan isn't always plant-based. Mm -hmm. And you know, in, in my book, I, I go in the first part of the book, I kind of just do like a little bit about how I got here. And then I kind of summarize my own personal, um, like dietary principles. And one of them is the difference between plant-based and vegan, because it can, it's also a lot of work to just sh change your diet to a vegan diet. It is, it is a lot of work. So it's, it's best to know the difference in the beginning so that you don't go down this path and then you kind of have to course correct and go down the other one. Because like you said, vegan isn't always healthy. Yeah. That's great. So like, what is your favorite, Ashley? Like, uh, what would you say is your favorite recipe? I know you might have a lot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> From the book? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, you're right. They're all like my little recipe babies. Um, <laughs> because I had, I had, um, a lot of recipes and they had to be cut down to fit into the book, but I would say that it really depends on like either my mood or what I want the recipe for. So if I'm serving a crowd, you know, a mixture of like vegans and omnivores or whoever, one of my favorite recipes is the shepherd's pie in my cookbook. Like the top is made with mashed potatoes and cauliflower and the bottom is veggies and lentils and like a tahini gravy. It's really savory. It's really delicious. And a lot of the times people don't know it's vegan. Um, if I'm craving something really sweet, uh, there are these raw cinnamon rolls in the book and they're made with dates and um, almonds and no added sugar. And they're really delicious and fun to make um, and really pretty when they're done. There's also a burger in the book. I would say actually that's probably my favorite recipe. It's called Bee's Burger. Um, B, my husband's name is Bernard who's also, you know, we eat the same. So when I started eating this way, he was like, yeah, sure. If I don't have to cook, <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> are, you say, are you saying like a, a fellow Newfoundlander, like you made, you converted your husband to a plant-based eater? <laughs> yes. And, but it was like, it was so easy. I think that, 
Again, it's interesting because because I work with food for, you know, this is my career. I'm always surrounded by people who are like, what are you eating? What are you making? What's that? I want that. Um, and so usually there's no convincing. They're like, yeah, that looks good. I'll have that. So I think with Bernard, it was like, just right from the beginning, he just was like, oh, this looks, this tastes actually really delicious. I'll, I'll have that. So his favorite, one of his favorite foods are pizzas and, and pizza and burgers. So we have burgers like once a week. And so there's a burger in the book called Beast Burger. And it is a burger I've worked on for years. And I think it's, I think it's, I'm biased, obviously, but I think it's like the best plant-based burger ever. Yeah. So that's <laughs> We can't wait for it. Yeah. What, is, is it releasing in January? It's, yeah, the release date is January 5th. Um, it's for pre-order right now up until the fourth, I guess. Yeah. Or the weekend, whatever the weekend is before the fifth. Um, and if you pre-order now and you submit your receipt, then you get um, a bonus e-cookbook, which has another 11 recipes, which are also delicious recipes. Like I said earlier, um, when you're working with publishers, you have a word limit. And when I submitted my manuscript, they were like, you are so over. <laughs> so I had to cut, you know, I had to cut stuff out. And I just felt like, you know, I, I still wanted these recipes to get out there because um, they represent a time in my life. And I think they're, they really work with the theme of the book. So yeah, so you can get that as well if you submit your receipt or, you know, just send me a screenshot or something like that. And then you can get that until the fourth. That's wonderful bonus. Yeah. Yes. I know you make it sound so easy, Ashley. Uh, okay, so you just use uh, whole grains, lentils, vegetables, fruits, and <laughs> and make a recipe out of it. So it was so easy to uh, convince my partner. But this is not the case when you go yeah. out there. So a lot of people find it very difficult, like when they have to transition to plant-based way of eating. So the so one is, as you can see, this is not so common like even when you go out it's not so common to find in grocery stores or restaurants and so some people really get so much overwhelmed thinking oh my god i have to transition to plant-based or and even have the feeling that it may not taste that great like when you're used to eating that french fries or uh, uh, fried chicken so as I said, I know you make it sound so easy that, okay, I have this delicious burger. <laughs> You're right. So, you know, and that is, I, I, you know, I make it sound easy. I think unknowingly, I've also been doing this, which it seems like forever, but it's also my job. <laughs> so yeah. it's pretty easy. Yeah. So what but, kind of uh, what kind of tips you would say like yeah. you know when people starting out yeah. like what kind of tips you you do you share like anyone who's on the fence or who want to start out There's I go through a series of uh suggestions The first thing is obviously to find a community if you can which is what you've built you know the gift of health is this community um for people who are looking for support and I think it's amazing so thank you guys doing that. It's incredible. Um, the thing I, I say most, I've already said it, is educate yourself first. So documentaries, books, and don't feel like you have a, don't feel panicked to make all of the changes at once. Don't feel like it needs to be something harsh uh, that you need to do right away. And that, you know, you need to master all of the recipes and all of the things right away, because then you do get overwhelmed and then you do kind of lose focus and get frustrated and you're like, oh, it's not worth it, right? So I think education, um, especially if you can educate yourself with other people. So like get people together and watch the documentary, read the book at the same time. I think those kinds of things are really helpful. Um, and then I think you have to come up with a plan. Once you understand, you need to understand the situation before you can start making the changes, you know? So once you understand things, I think it's important to just take, you know, one meal at a time, one recipe at a time, and ultimately come up with a plan, you know, that this, maybe this week you do two meatless meals this week, maybe next week you, you know, is the beginning of giving up dairy and you, you're ready with recipes and substitutes that you're going to use. So it's about preparation and having a plan. And um, I think most importantly, 
being kind to yourself, it's so easy to um, get upset with yourself or to feel like you're failing or that you messed up because you bought like the wrong thing. And then you're wondering, okay, do I throw it out? But it was like $10, do I use it? Like, I just because those are real situations. Um, I think that you always have to forgive yourself if you um, trip up and then just know that it's a process and that every day is a new beginning. And you just have to, you know, give it your all, but also, you know, be a little bit loose with yourself. And then again, I mean, I, again, I'm biased because I make recipes, but I think having a series of cookbooks that you can go to for um, your regular weeknight meals, or if you're having Christmas dinner or you're having like New Year's parties, like find the recipes ahead of time that you want to make so that you're prepared. You have put that so beautifully, Ashley. And you have actually struck major points, like when it comes to change, like whether it is plant-based eating or some other major lifestyle change that you're trying to make. So it is so important to like get the clarity, to get the knowledge, to be aware, like what to eat, what not to eat, like how you can uh, heal yourself from whatever chronic condition that you're facing. And at the same time, like also like have the skills to make the change, as you said, like uh, like you could just go one at a time rather than trying to change everything at once. So and be gentle with yourself, so that so so having having the skills to do it to do the change and at at the same time have a supportive community too because that I mean that plays a huge factor. So like you know because especially during this times, like when there are not many people doing the same thing as you are. So you feel kind of left alone, but like when you have that supportive community, it's very easy to bring that change. So yeah, that's so true. And I was just thinking about uh, what you said about this time of year, because mm -hmm. I decided to change everything on December 1st. <laughs> I remember this because I didn't really know what I was doing at the time. You know, I was figuring it out, but I didn't really announce it. You know, I just was like, I'm doing this for me. So I'm going to figure this out. So I didn't really tell a whole lot of people except for like my parents who, you know. Um, so I remember going to Christmas dinner, like at um, like relatives homes and nobody knew. So I was like there with a plate of food. And I literally remember like, eat, I swear, eating out of my purse like I made something and ate it out of my purse and just like flipped plates with my husband so he ate like mine and his so what that reminds me of is that it's totally okay to be upfront and just clear about it with people without you know making them feel like they have to do it too I mean if they do that's awesome but you can you know you can announce it and be proud of it proud of it and just say you know I'm trying I'm really trying to do this for me so thank you so much for offering me this, but I'm going to try and eat this. I just think that like the holidays is a lot of peer pressure around food, you know? Um, I also just recently on my website, I put up um, a vegan and oil-free spice cake and um, like a chickpea loaf, which is kind of like, you know, the centerpiece of like the plant-based dinner instead of like a turkey. So those are resources there. And I have some cookies and stuff coming up just to help people know that there are, are um, similar things that you can make that still feel special, that still feel like you're celebrating, um, but that are just a lot healthier for you. So like, how did your parents react when you announced them like, okay, I'm going plant-based? <laughs> And what kind of and, and uh, also you had some attempts to educate them. How did that go? <laughs> um, okay, well, this was again uh, over well, yeah ten years ago, so it wasn't very common, you know. And vegans were seen as so extreme, and I think some people still think all this is extreme, but it just seems so out of you know left field, so different, so random. So. Um, I do believe I sat my parents down and we watched Forks Over Knives together. But my parents have always been so supportive and I've reinvented myself 
so many times over the years, as your introduction clearly shows, <laughs> you know, like I've gone to school, I've ch- I'm like, no, I don't want to be this. No, I want to be that. No, I don't want to be that anymore. Now I want to be this. So I think that they were like, okay, this is the thing that's happening now. And we're going to just, you know, go on. So, the, so kind, you know, my mom would, you know, check recipes with me or, you know, like Sunday dinner, traditional Newfoundland dinner. She started making it without salt meat like 10 years ago. And at first people were like, how can you do this? And I don't think that she has since, you know, I think we would have like our peace pudding and vegetables and cabbage and stuff and, and like a vegan gravy. So they helped a lot because they were really um, encouraging. And, you know, my mom would help me look for ingredients because again, so many years ago, you couldn't find chia seeds or nutritional yeast or, you know, it just, it wasn't super common. So you kind of had to dig for that stuff. Um, And eventually, you know, uh, not only did they become tolerant and accepting of what I was doing, but they became interested, but I still felt like, you know, it's that thing when like your spouse or your mom or someone in your family can tell you something, but sometimes you have to hear it from someone else or from a different angle or from a different perspective for it to really penetrate. And so when I heard about your uh, retreats, the gift of health retreats, how many years ago was it that I went three? Three Three years, three years, years. yeah. So when I found out about that, I knew that I wanted to go myself to meet you guys and to support you because I just thought it was absolutely amazing and so needed. And then my mom was like, I wanna go. And then my dad was like, well, let's make a trip out of it. So we all, you know, drove out together. And um, I just watched them like learn it for the first time through you, you know, because I was around all the time and I was saying all kinds of stuff and some stuff stuck, some stuff went in one ear and out the other. And I just felt like the concentrated um, environment that you create with like-minded people who also are are new to this just create such a, you know, fertile place to learn and to explore and to just feel like you can be vulnerable and say, well, I I don't know if I can do this. And then you guys walk people through the steps. It's just amazing. So when we left your um, retreat, I think like the next day, my mom was like, that's it done. And so (laughs) (laughs) my father was like that for like a week. (laughs) But But I have to say it did create a lasting impression because even though, you know, um, they still cook like meats and stuff, there's a lot of meatless meals that happen in my house now and it's not strange or weird. And, you know, there's things that are regularly made and there's a lot more um, acceptance and interest in it as opposed to like, you know, well, what's that? What's, What's tofu? What's, you know, now everybody knows what everything is. And, you know, in my family, there's, there's a, several of us who are plant-based um, and many of us who are, you know, like 70%, 80% ish plant-based. So, you know, it's, uh, it's been a process, but it's hearing it from, especially physicians, doctors, you know, trusted physicians, um, it really hit it home for, for my parents and then my family. And I think I, I know so many people now who've traveled to your retreats and, and kind of said the same thing, you know, like it really, it really like bumps you ahead a few steps in the process of making a transition to a healthier lifestyle. I know at that time you had to travel and uh, like, like many people even traveled outside Canada, but uh, it's, it's interesting. Uh, Like now it's offered online so that people don't have to travel and they can just do it from the comfort of their home. (laughs) Yes. That is fantastic. That is absolutely ideal. I mean, I, in 2020, everything is virtual. But uh, yeah, virtual is so uh, convenient for people and makes it really accessible. There is something very special though about being in a room with a bunch of people where you can't leave. Yes, <laughs> and, <laughs> yes absolutely. And, and you can taste the food. They have to stay and listen. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. As you shared, like this transition of changing lifestyle is a challenge, and it needs a lot of pieces of to make the puzzle like education, having skills, having support. And what uh, you you did it by yourself, like, you know, with all the support like 10 years ago. And we, when we discovered this, uh, we did it like around the same time, eight to 10 years ago. But what we found is like, when we are, when we have all these pieces of puzzle like laid in place and we have good resources, 
people can transition much faster mm-hmm. right Definitely. like what 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 somebody can do on their own in 2 years you know we've been able to show them how to do it in like 6 to 8 weeks yes it's amazing yeah um but i wanted to come back to one one thing that has been on my mind like hey you know you went to the pharmacy school right now there are a lot of students actually i know uh kids of our friends who are going to pharmacy school yeah. so if you had to put yourself back like you know put there in their shoes like in a 10 15 years back what would you tell your younger self hey learn about medications but yeah. what do you think is missing in the pharmacy education i think that you know when i started learning about the health and nutrition piece of my own disease I was like, what? How come no one how come I didn't I didn't know this? Like I did an entire autoimmune MS piece in school. So um and I think it's the same in in a lot of med schools as well, you know. There's some education on nutrition, but not a lot and I'm not sure how deep it goes or how um recent the information is. So, if I were to put myself back there or if I were to talk to a student today that's in pharmacy school, I would say that it's it's in your best interest and your patient's best interest if you get really curious about the lifestyle and diet piece that you're going to get taught in so many of your classes you know in pharmacy school i think it's still the same you know you go through different disease states you know over f- several years and you learn about you know everything about the disease and then you also learn about the treatment and in the beginning of the treatment there's like a little line that's like diet and lifestyle try that for 3 months if that doesn't work move on to medication medication. Yes. And then you spend all your time on medication. Yeah. So, I say, you know, there's It's just so no one line. Even in our medical textbooks, diabetes, line. yeah, diabetes, diet and lifestyle first line and then like you know, try that for a few yeah. months and then go to medications and the whole Yeah, it's like high that. cholesterol, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, um, you know, obesity, all these, you know, lifestyle chronic diseases. That is it's like really important to mention dietary and lifestyle changes that's important first but then that's going to fail so move on to medication <laughs> <laughs> but that piece that piece doesn't have to fail so what i would say to pharmacy students is to learn about that and get really well versed in that or at least understand where to point people for uh resources or more help because pharmacists um are so important they're the first point of contact for so many people with the healthcare system you know you walk up to your pharmacist and just ask them a, a random question about anything i've been asked questions about everything in my time as a pharmacist from you know like what supplement to take but also you know what protein powder to use what green vegetables should i be eating like all kinds of things so i think that when a pharmacist is like you know there is a lot of power here you know you should look this point you have power you can empower yourself to make these changes and you might never have to go to the high blood pressure medication because often that medication might cause an issue that requires another medication or maybe that medication doesn't work enough and you need another one anyway so i just think that it's really important for pharmacy students to respect that part and to educate themselves on that part and know that they are also um a teacher and a healer in that area as well you put it so well ashley that is so yes. yeah and uh, like even we resonated in our medical school is it was the same thing the diet and lifestyle but we were not taught much or coached like how um you can counsel patients about diet and lifestyle and uh, we spent hours and hours like we spent more than 600 hours learning about the medication right. like okay this disease you treat with this pill and uh, like this side effect and so on and so forth and and the sad fact is even nowadays uh, that's how the system is set up like the hospital system or uh, even the medical thing but you like you brought up such an important point like uh, educating about the diet and lifestyle so <clears throat> like our listeners would really love to uh, listen like what do you eat i know like uh, after you have been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis what were the things that you were having in your diet or what are the changes that you made to your diet and lifestyle so if you can share that aspect it would be very helpful like for people who think, are yeah well now, that yeah um 
what I eat now is much different than what I ate, you know, the first few months after I decided to go plant-based. Um, in the first few weeks, I do remember thinking, okay, if I can get like a couple of breakfast ideas, a couple of lunch ideas, a couple of dinner ideas that can like, that will get me to a point, you know, where I can make more things. It just, I need some time to learn. So, you know, for breakfast, like a whole grain toast with like almond butter or, um, you know, if, if you eat peanut butter, um, oatmeal with like ground flax seeds and fruit. Like my breakfasts were pretty much the same. I just kind of skipped over the butter and I made sure I bought like a healthier bread. I am I used to um, eat a lot of Ezekiel bread. That was my favorite. You can't get that here in Taiwan. Um, and I think for lunches, I um, lunches and dinners actually, I made a lot of soups because naturally a lot of soups are generally vegan. Just, you know, you, you just skip some parts or you replace um, meat with beans or things like that. But I did make a lot of soups and like I brought them for lunch. I remember eating them for dinner and lunch and um, very simple foods like whole grain pasta with like a tomato sauce and maybe some like baked tofu on the side. But that was being very adventurous, you know, in the beginning, baked tofu. But it was still delicious. I didn't feel like starving or like I was going without. It actually felt every meal I made, I just felt so much better about like, oh, I can do this. I can do this. And then and then you get a cookbook and then you try some things. And I do have to say, um, I have hundreds of cookbooks. I am a true foodie. Um, I always have been, but the first cookbook that I cooked from a lot was the the original Forks Over Knives cookbook. Um, I There's a lot of simple things there or just like basic ways to make a thing you're thinking about. Like, okay, if I wanted a cheese sauce, like what would that look like? So if you don't have a whole lot of equipment, like a food processor or like a blender, I would say the Forks Over Knives cookbook, the very original one, or the... Um, China study cookbook, the original one, those are really easy, basic cookbooks. And I think I cooked from that for like a year. That's what I ate in the beginning. Now it's very different. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's and amazing that like the stuff that you've created on your blog, like it's um, the rice shine cook blog, like we've been there multiple times and it's uh, lots of beautiful recipes. and. It's and, not just the taste, but also you make it look so beautiful. Yes, and our participants, like Gift of Health participants, like enjoy. I mean, they, they visit this uh, rice, cook and shine, and uh, they benefit. And uh, even like a lo like lot of people like are really excited. And, and they're also excited that you're from Newfoundland. And, I know. Like, <laughs> it's, that's, that's, that's nice. um, you know, I think with food... I really, I don't think that there's anything you cannot create in a plant-based version. That's the approach I kind of took with my cookbook as well from everything from, you know, like pastas and spaghettis and like just pancakes and muffins and bagels. I believe you can make absolutely everything. You just have to practice a little bit, figure out some, you know, adjustments to make. And that's what I've done with the cookbook. You know, I took a couple of years to figure this stuff out, but I just feel like um, a lot of, and I, I still think we're here where we think about healthy eating is like a little bit like blah, you know, like a little bit like ho-hum, boring kind of thing. I take a completely different approach. My culinary world exploded when I went plant-based. The, the, the parameters of working with whole foods is just incredible. And you can create flavors and colors and textures that just, you know, can compete with any kind of dish, I think. So that's really what I want to show people is that it can look good. It can taste good. Um, it can impress people. It can be elegant. It can be fun. It can be like a Friday night, you know, let's have like something cheatish that's, you know, not really cheatish, but it feels like it. So I just feel like, you know, um, you, a plant-based diet for me has not involved a feeling of sacrifice or limitation at all. It's been quite the opposite. It's been so freeing. And I do know from talking, you know, with people I've worked with in the past and after doing, you know, demos and cooking classes that a lot of people who persevere and, you know, get through the beginning part where you're learning for like the first year feel the same way that it's just like the best, you know, it just takes away so much 
um, confusion about food and anxiety about food. And, you know, there's a lot of indecision sometimes and like, okay, well, is this healthy or is this healthy? Because you can't, you know, go into a grocery store and just trust the labels on, on things. So um, yeah, that was the goal with the book is what I'm getting at to make people believe that it, it, it can look good and, and taste good and be good for you. I was really thrilled to listen when you said when you were in culinary school, like you were able to ask, okay, can I cook uh, without using this? Because even in a lot of culinary schools, I see that it's difficult, like just like our medical school system, our pharmacy school system, even the culinary school system is mostly like it uses uh, like foods that are not healthy. And of course, I mean, they do use uh, products and different things just to make it taste better or good. And, and they think like uh, high, like high fatty or the processed foods, uh, they taste That's better. That is true. And um, so I went to the culinary school I attended was called the Natural Gourmet Institute, which at the time was you know, the United States is leading uh, health focused culinary school. It's since uh, been taken over by ICE, I believe. But uh, when I went there, you know, the first day you meet all your, uh, your uh, classmates and you meet all the head chefs and you introduce yourself. And from day one, I was like, this is how I eat. I'm not sure how this is going to go. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to eat anything here, but we'll see. But surprisingly, um, not only like was it I, I saw how things were made traditionally and the whole time through I was like oh I can change that oh I can switch this and um a lot of the chefs were really amazing and I would just ask them like can I make mine like this and then we'd ask the whole class and they'd be like yeah sure and, and that's how we did it so now mind you a lot of stuff was made that I either didn't eat or I tasted and was like oh okay that's not in my that's not in my diet but for the most part, it was such a great place for me to experiment with how to substitute things and how to make it uh, taste better and still be healthy. And they were really accommodating. And also that was right at the time when things started expanding, you know, when it was just becoming more accepted to, you know, use more interesting ingredients. And that's when gluten-free was really, was really hitting mainstream. So um, it, it was, it was, uh, it wasn't that difficult. That's that's great. And uh, luckily uh, now, like there are a lot of uh, plant based uh, culinary schools that I mean, that have come up. So, so yes, it's, it, yeah, it's it, it's really uh, fascinating to see all this. So one exciting thing that is happening right now is uh, American College of Lifestyle Medicine. Uh, yeah, American College of Lifestyle Medicine. Um, it has an, it's a new uh, uh, college, like new board certification in lifestyle medicine, uh, which we took uh, like last year, uh, board certification with that. There is actually a track for pharmacies, pharmacists uh, as well, if, uh, pharmacists or pharmacy students, where if they want to learn more about lifestyle, like, because sometimes people want to learn, but they don't know where to learn from. Yes, American exactly. College of Lifestyle Medicine is a great, wonderful resource. Uh, they have a track for pharmacists. They could become American College of Lifestyle Medicine certified professional. There is a physician track. And there is also uh, a uh, like a that professional is track so for amazing. Yeah. That needs to be uh, off, that needs to be broadcasted in the schools. You know that this is something that you should pair. That is absolutely fantastic. I yeah. wish that existed when I was in school. Yes. 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 And uh, one amazing thing through this American College of Lifestyle Medicine is. They have a curriculum for culinary okay. medicine. Culinary medicine is where, awesome. like, we're actually the uh, in some parts of uh, US in some medical schools, it is being taught to medical That's students true. as a subject culinary medicine. That is so exciting. That is so yeah. exciting. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it's been so like you know we can keep going like this. Like <laughs> you know you have to wake up early. What time is it now in Taiwan? Uh, right now, I got up at five. <laughs> right, now, right now, it's five seven fifty five, so it's five to eight. But I'm so used to it because all of my colleagues and like like my publisher and my whole family is you know uh, in North America. So I have a weird schedule: early morning, sometimes late nights. So, but it's been really nice to talk to you guys, and I miss home so much. 
so much. I'm usually home every December. This will be my first Christmas, not in Newfoundland. So I miss a lot. And it's really nice to see your faces. Yes. Yeah, it, it, it was nice talking to you, Ashley. And thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and uh, about, and we are all really excited about your upcoming cookbook. And uh, like, it's a wonderful resource. As you said, like, it's, like, it's unique in the way that like it is plant-based, gluten-free, oil-free, so which is a rare combination. You would either find books which are just gluten-free or which are just vegan, which are just plant-based. I wanted to hit as many, because if you go down the health path, just to finish on this note, mm -hmm. a lot of the times, you know, you're learning a lot of things at once and some people do decide to go gluten-free or some people do decide to eat more raw dishes or more anti-inflammatory ingredients. Mm -hmm. And it's, hard sometimes because you have to pick and choose recipes and books and combine them yourself. So I kind of wanted to offer a resource that could hit a lot of things. You know, there are some, you know, there's many nut free recipes in the book as well, but I, it was kind of difficult to make them all nut free and gluten free and oil free and vegan. So, but I wanted to hit those three because I knew that there are a community of people trying to do this. Um, and also the oil free thing I know can be very polarizing you know, because there's, you know, cultures all around the world who like thrive on, you know, drinking olive oil and all that, <laughs> you know, not, I'm not saying that's what they do, but that's what's said. Um, and I think that for me, the oil free part is just like an invitation. Like you're not going to miss, if you cook with that oil, you're not losing any nutrition. Um, if anything, you, you know, it's a, re it's a reduction in calories. It's a reduction in fat. It's a, in saturated fat, trans fat, all the fats. It's, um, you know, your food's a bit cleaner. And I think that even if you don't want to do it all the time in the book, it just, I teach you how to do that. And it's interesting because I know that people are like, oh, well, if I don't need oil in that dish, why am I using it? You know, so uh, the oil-free thing I think is uh, uh, just educating people on how to do things a bit differently in the book. That is so helpful, like yeah. to have all those resources at one place. I think it's going to be, you know, um, a fantastic oh. bestseller. We oh my you... God! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that. But it's it's put out there with the intention. Um, to help people and you know it's out of my hands now and I hope it goes on to live its own life you know I hope it gets dog-eared and on people's you know kitchen counters and written on and posted notes and <laughs> I hope that it just becomes a resource for people to help them yes and uh, we, we can't uh, wait to buy your cookbook so we are eagerly waiting and yes like we can uh, definitely pre-order so for some of you who are wondering so you can uh, pre-order from Amazon, is it? Yes. So you can pre-order from Amazon, Chapters, Barnes okay. & Noble, Amazon.ca.com.uk, wherever your viewers are watching. Um, if you're in North America, if you go to riseshinecook.ca slash cookbook, or the cookbook tab is there, all those options are there for North America to purchase it. Um, but yeah, the Amazons are, are a sure bet. I will note that if you're in Asia because I have had people contact me that the book is 12 week delay in release in Asia. So it looks like it's unavailable, but it will be, but just 12 weeks later. Oh, okay. So yeah. like for the viewers, we will post the pre-order link so that uh, they can find it. So, so we'll just post it in the comment section so that they can see it easily. Thank you so much. Yeah. So when you are saying about the, gluten-free, uh, oil-free, vegan, plant-based. Like I saw a cartoon where, you know, one person goes to a restaurant, hey, do you have anything that is gluten-free, oil-free, vegan and all? <laughs> and and the, the waiter actually brings a, a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I want to tell the viewers, hey, you know, you could create a burst of culinary flavors, you right? Can. And with a lot There's of health. So yeah, <laughs> you know, it's interesting because obviously when I go out to eat, uh, I'm not flexible on the plant based thing. But with the oil thing, I usually chat with the chef and I'm like, use mm -hmm. as little as possible. I know you have a whole operation back there and you're not going to, you know, dehydrate me some crackers. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I understand the implications, especially since I've worked, you know, in a restaurant before to understand the back end. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, just do your best. But 
it's amazing what can happen, especially today when you talk to a chef at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, just a few weeks ago, it was uh, mine and Bernard's uh, wedding anniversary. And there's an Italian restaurant here in Taipei that's really lovely. And so I just got in touch with the chef and we chatted and he did like a seven course tasting meal for us. Everything was vegan. Um, everything was minimal oil. And afterwards he came to me and said, this was such an interesting experience. And this is just to tie a bow on this. The woman sitting next to me was like, what are you eating? And I was like, I know it's like, he did a vegan thing for us. She was like, it, you know, is that on the menu? And I was like, it's not on the menu. <laughs> and so this lady and I start chatting and we exchange phone numbers in true Newfoundland fashion. I become friends with, you know, this Taiwanese woman next to me. And she texted me last week she got in touch with the chef and brought six of her friends and they did a plant-based tasting menu at that restaurant for six of their friends and it's not even on the menu so i just thought that was so nice you know so like some restaurants you really have to ask and don't be afraid if they say they can't do it that's okay if maybe they don't even know maybe you have to give them options explain things what you can have you know um, so yes, you can go to restaurants and get more than a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. We had Thank such a fun, so fun night with you, Ashley. So <laughs> like have a wonderful day and thank you so much. Like Thank for... you. I look forward to, you know, following you guys and, and staying in the gift of health community. It's really wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.